Hello everyone and welcome to the third, yes the third, Virtually Redundant, a podcast listened to just by two people including us three. In today's show we will talk about personal and commercial product and project failures. My name is Daniel and I am joined by my experts in failures, Connor and Darren. Good week? Not not a bad week at all, all looking bright and up, you know, weather's good which we love here in Ireland. So yeah, no, no real complaints and getting into some weird Korean TV shows. Latest one is about 100 fitness fanatics all trying to wrestle each other or something in a dog park i, I don't really understand it <laughs> wait, wait wait sorry go back I've, i have i haven't heard about this you, you know sometimes you go on netflix and like they go oh this is most popular and this week the latest one so there's this show called the physical 100 essentially it's a lot of people in korea so they've taken people who are athletes some people are bodybuilders some people are just absolute posers essentially you know they're all that kind of oh i have the best physique whatever and then they kind of bring a hundred of them into kind of an arena. And the first one was they all had to do like a hanging challenge. And of course, all the bodybuilders all dropped off first because, you know, it's all fake muscle or whatever. And then the second thing was, you know, that determines they could pick their opponent for an arena to go and wrestle for a ball for like three, four minutes. To, and it's like whoever loses gets knocked out of the competition. And they could pick either between a sand and water wrestling pit or something that resembles a dog park. Are you sure you watched it on Netflix and not the mother <laughs> of website? I, I think you're using your inside voice, Connor. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was Crofts and I just got really confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Darren, how was your week? Well, I'm not fucking top of that. I didn't watch a hundred mostly men wrestle each other. Like, what? <laughs> like, how was you? How was your week, Darren? Oh, uh, yeah, I watched 102 rest- mostly men wrestling each other. <laughs> fuck it. No, I, I can't. All I can say is fuck you, Daniel, for getting a better microphone in this in the podcast that you're hosting. We had shitty, shitty store bought <laughs> brand microphone quality. And then the second Daniel's like, I'm hosting, it's like, hello, people. Welcome to Virtually Redundant. Listen to the smooth voice. <laughs> fuck you. So this topic is going to be talking about box office bombs. Okay, so last week, um, remember, we were discussing guilty pleasures. And one of the ones for me personally is watching the commercial failure movies. And one in particular that comes to mind is the 1995 movie Waterworld. So this movie was meant to be like big, massive blockbuster 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 hit. And it's meant to be like the, the, you know, the bee's knees. And it cost them um, 175 million to make. And only made only made back two six five million, you know. So for every one dollar, they got two dollar nearly. And to give a comparison, like Batman Forever only cost a hundred million and got back like three three six million. So they made three dollar under one dollar, you know. So what's what's everyone's favorite personal box office bomb that you kind of enjoy or you enjoy to watch or? So my my favorite, I guess, box office bomb. Like there's two box office bombs that I always kind of love to reference when I'm talking about them. The first one is the one that I love, which is the Chronicles of Riddick. That was considered a box office bomb. You know, it stars our beloved Fast and Furious in Diesel. <laughs> the Chronicles of Riddick is like the I think the twentieth in the Fast and Furious series, I believe. After Vin <laughs> Diesel kind of <laughs> at the rocket ship, he takes a rocket ship, he goes off, he he gets night vision. It's it's crazy. But I, I love that movie. And the one that I like to reference as a movie that was absolutely horrible. And it was box office one was Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within, which basically almost what they say almost bankrupt the company. And um, but they they basically opened up a picture studio, Square Pictures, and they only made, they only made like one movie and one animated short for like the Animatrix movie, um, or the Animatrix TV series. But yeah, they just did that, and then they had to shut it down. And and then the company were planning on merging with. Enix, but Enix were like, yeah, we're not touching you for for a few years after that crappy movie. So definitely a a bomb that I love to kind of talk about. Nice. I I don't know if I love it, but just because I came across it recently, just how obscure it is, like I'd completely forgotten it as a thing. So there was this game developer in the 90s called Chris Roberts. He made a film called Wing Commander based on his games and uh yeah it was a complete car crash and apparently you know there's one bit where they're in space and they have a 
I don't know, a space aircraft carrier and they have to push you know, a spaceship off it with a space bulldozer or something like that. It gets a bit weird. <laughs> was was it like a hundred Muslim men pushing it? Is this, you know, we back to this Muslim men here? Not, not quite. He did actually manage to get high quality actors. I don't know. Freddie Prince Jr. was in it, so maybe that's your Muslim man for it. <laughs> I think he's more. He, I think he's more your pretty face, you know, rather than your Muslim man. Well, he was trying to be a Muslim man in it, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you about the film apart from the space bulldozer. Now, <laughs> I, it, it's not exactly a work of art, you know. I, I, I think their their biggest thing, you know, to get people into the cinema to watch it was I think they put the Star Wars Episode One Phantom Menace trailer in the movie and that was the only reason like apparently back in the day people literally went into the cinema watched the star wars trailer and then left <laughs> oh yeah because that wasn't a disappointing movie was it <laughs> I, actually saying that people love episode one like do you ever see like people love like the original prequels like there's definitely a massive cult following even though like i guess the first episode one wasn't wasn't the best I think for 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 when it comes to st- something like Star Wars, I think there's actually three fac- factions now. Essentially, there's the original four, five, and six fan base who prefer it over the others, and then obviously there's the the new uh, the one, two, and three versus the um, seven, eight, and nine. So I think there's there's a constant battle with those three factions, and then there's the people who just hate all um, nine of them. You mean the Star Trek fans? <laughs> yeah, the Star Trek fans. Yeah, <laughs> or the Wing Commander fans. <laughs> just just one person in a room waving a flag and be like i can't wait for the sequel wish wish freddie prince jr when is he going to come back and do wing commander 2 but i mean you raise like i speaking of like star trek and star wars is i used to love star trek and i definitely was a fanboy but i can't i can't do it anymore like i can't do star trek i can't do Star Wars. There's just too many movies, too many TV shows, too many everything. Stop making everything a cinematic universe, please. I beg of you, just just do something new for a change. You can't be silent anymore on this. You you have to speak out about the Star Trek issue. Uh, I think JJ Abrahams ruined it for me. And then he moved on to Star Wars. <laughs> and then he ruined it for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to get some fanboy angry. They're virtually redundant bastards. <laughs> I'll have you know that Star Wars Episode Nine is a classic. It is the Citizen Kane of our generation. <laughs> I I have a, a confession. I've never seen Citizen Kane. I don't think anyone has. No. <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't actually know the story. It's about a sleigh. <laughs> Okay, there's only probably one person listening to this that gets that joke. So please email me if you've got that joke. <laughs> you mentioned Batman Forever got more yep. than Waterworld. Is that the one with nipples? Oh, no. Nipples. Uh, nipples. Think, uh, yeah, you know, George, <laughs> well, George, you know, George Clooney. No, it's not the George Clooney with nipples one. It is the one with Jim, Jim Carrey and Val Kimmer. Yeah, Val Kimmer. Nip, nip, nip. Well, no, come on, ah, oh, come on now. If you, you know the the Batman, uh, oh, what is it, uh, Batman? If you just go, if you go with Batman. Batman with nipples, please. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one where he has like a bat credit card or something? That one? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, it's uh, Batman and Robin is the bat nipple ones. Oh. Yeah. No, it's it's a uh, yeah. No, sorry, sorry. The Batman, uh, it's the one with Jim Carrey and um, Tommy Lee Jones, and I believe there's this famous story from it uh, where Tommy Lee Jones didn't like Jim Carrey on set, and he says like, I he said something iconic, something about like I can't stand your tomfoolery or something to Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> he played Two Face in a Batman movie. <laughs> He's in a Batman movie. I get. I, I mean, what was that? Tim, that wasn't Tim Burton, was it? Maybe he thought he'd signed up for a more arty Tim Burton project, and then suddenly it was, yeah, we're going to go all goofy and stuff, and then. Oh, um, sorry, I'm wrong. He said, uh, Jim Carrey said, like, what's the problem to him? And Tommy Lee Jones replied to him, I cannot sanction your buffoonery. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, good. Uh, uh, it would have been better if he, uh, you know, um, Tom Foolery, you know, because t- Tom, Tom, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. You, you'll just forever change the quote now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's Tom. <laughs> Chat GPT will pick it up now and p- change the quote forever. This this is where people get the quote wrong to certain movies. It's, it's cut a statue of people like you, Daniel. 
Speaking of um, chat at GTP, has anyone used it yet? Yeah, I have. That, that's it. You just yes, yeah. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> Go on to what, what? What did you use it for? It was innocent stuff. Not not. I wasn't searching a hundred Muslim men or Batman nipples, but <laughs> I was basic. I I I was. I said, okay, I want you to write a story about my daughter. So it created this nice story about my daughter going off on an adventure and she came across a cave and she goes into the cave to explore and she comes across a dragon and she sees some gems in the cave as well behind the dragon and so she wants to get access to the gems and the dragon says please leave you're not allowed here and my my daughter says no i I set out to explore and i would really like to explore and the bat the the dragon was i was about to say the batman the (laughs) the dragon basically said i'm so impressed by your braveness here's a gem and my daughter says, thank you for your kindness. And she left. And I was like, that was a great story. And I said, okay, actually improve the story by making my daughter fight the dragon. So same thing happened. She went in and she fought the dragon and there was a fight going on and she slayed the dragon. And then she, after she slayed the dragon, she says, thank you for your kindness. And then picked up the gem and left. And I was like, what? wow, that's a badass. That's a, my daughter's a badass. <laughs> Do we think the Marvel movies these days and all these DC extended universe, you know, it's actually just chat GPT there and the execs are, you know, just plop it in search queries to it. Then they're like, yeah, brilliant script. Let's do it. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if some studios do that just to kind of get some inspiration. It wouldn't surprise me at all. I just don't like how everything is a cinematic universe now. Like they, they try to just build everything. But my shampoo will be fucking a cinematic universe next week. Remember the um, monster cinematic universe you were trying to start up, and it was, it was one of the ones was um, Tom Cruise in the uh, Mummy remake. Well, one of the ones, the only one. <laughs> well, no, there's many cinematic universes. I'm pretty sure they were trying to start up and it failed. I, I, yeah, be like one of the ones, the monster. One of the monster was. It's like it's the only monster. She tried to say uh, it's uh, cinematic. There, excuse yourself. There's MonsterVerse, which is King Kong and Godzilla. That's there's the MonsterVerse cinematic universe. But is that was that was, that, was Tom Cruise going to be part of that? No, no, this is a different one. There's a classic Monsters one, which is like the Mummy Returns, Dracula was going to be in it, Invisible Man, stuff like that. Like, there was going to be a different one. Yeah, but so you only made one cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> universe of one film. <laughs> it's just Tom Cruise. <laughs> the Dark Universe, I think it was called. Oh, yeah, it didn't happen. And we're all happy for it. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I don't, I, I never saw the Mummy Returns. I, I saw the Mummy in the Mummy Returns with. Brendan Fraser, I thought that was, I really liked that one. That was amazing. Not the third one. Third one was a pile of shit. But yeah, the, the first two were good. I've never seen the third one either. I've only watched the first two. Yeah. If, if anyone's listening and has never seen them, stop at the second one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does anyone clearly remember the bad CGI from the second one with the rock as the Scorpion King? Yeah. It will haunt me till the day I die. Yeah. We should ask ChatGPT to remake it. <laughs> yeah, remake Scorpion King and make it good. <laughs> so another topic that we mentioned at the start of this was personal project failures. It could be IT, non-IT related, you know. So I'll I'll just get the ball rolling. It's something that myself and actually Darren here has done before. So when we were in uh, college, we decided to make a mobile uh, application and I would work on the server side. Darren would work on the mobile side. He was our mobile expert. And fuck he, you. We no, right. fuck you. I hate mobile development. <laughs> so he was the, he was the Android. He was the Android because he loved us so much. And if you're looking no. for any Android developers, please contact down at fitting you be done at gmail. Oh, fuck, fuck off. <laughs> so, but two things, this application. So it, it was an interesting one because the application allowed you to send them um, images, videos, text to a server. The server would randomly send it to someone else who's running the app. And every time you send something, you'd get a different person. So you'd never really talk to someone, but you'd get random messages, images, and videos. And it was a novelty idea. We were in college. We were naive and young. So two bad things happened with this app, as you may imagine. One of them is obvious, another one not so obvious. So the server that I wrote, I was hosting on a server, a dedicated server. And whatever happened, it broke out of the hypervisor. So it started up memory for everyone else. And I got a bad email saying, hey, we had to kill your server. Please stop. 
um, and, and please fix it before you bring it back up. So I spent actually a good oh god month refactoring the whole thing. I like obviously the blame can be put on the hypervisor. I shouldn't allow it, but like you know, it just took a month of refactoring and trying to figure out how we did it so when it never happened again. But the second one, which is probably more obvious to the listeners out there, is. I had to cache, obviously, some of the videos, audios and stuff like that just to make it quicker. And every day I had to go in and clean up the server because the amount of um, penises pictures and penis videos and dirty messages that I had to clean up, I had to constantly go in and, and remove it. The amount of penises was ungodly, you know. But the, the, the problem that I have with it is that the server is long gone now, so it's no longer running. But the, I got told that I was forever backed up if I ever needed. So there's a snapshot somewhere. That's hundreds and hundreds of penises and videos of penises with my name on it. So if there's ever like kind of like what's them shows called where you go and get lockers, you know, and the auction where if, if there's anything ever like that for storage that's lost, my name has that on it with penises. So that was a that was a good personal project failure. Yeah, we, which I found really odd because it was only Connor in our beta group. It was very bizarre. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would just like to clarify, I was not the only one putting up pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there were others. But yeah, in terms of um, personal or professional failure, um, I, I vote, um, Daniel, your career. <laughs> <laughs> Commercial failure. No, I'm probably this podcast is probably going to be on this, this last ever episode. But I don't know. I think I succeeded in everything I ever wanted to do. So yeah, that's, that's a real positive take. I'll hail our Lord Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, did you have any personal project failures, IT, non-IT related? Oh, plenty. Yeah. I don't know where to start, to be honest. <laughs> um, actually, I, I would just like to point out, and Daniel can attest to this, maybe not a personal or professional failure, but Connor has this amazing ability, right? So do you know the way some when you talk to some people and they're going, oh, yeah, I really like that. That's their stamp of approval. like, And you're like, oh, if this person likes it, I know I'm going to like it, right? When Connor gets hyped about something like a game or an MMO or something like that, and he gets hyped, you know for an absolute fact that it's going to fail. Literally, it's going to fail. <laughs> like, 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 you never get hyped about anything, but when you do, it is a total and utter disaster. <laughs> I can attest to that too. There's games that Connor hyped and we all saved up money. College students paid for it, bought it. Down, you know, and it's just terrible games. Terrible games. And like two years later, like Connor never recommended a game and then he did recommend another one. And we all fell for it again, not remembering that previous. And ah. Oh. I think you definitely must do some weird like yeah, it, it it's like you you don't hype you you're not one to hype stuff, Connor, but when you do it just like I feel like you're just actually doing this deliberately. Like you're researching it <laughs> so intently that you're like, yes, this 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 is the kind of game that people can get hyped out, but I know it's gonna fail. And then you're like, oh no, guys, download download the 600 gig game. It's it's gonna be we're all gonna play it. And then it's just like, you know, yeah, a total flop, a, a total flop, a waste of time. Can you explain how you do it? What's your reason? I, I, d I don't know, maybe, because I seem to remember one that I think I, I hyped and then the last second I didn't buy it and you guys bought it. Then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. Maybe it's like a weird reverse intuition thing or something. I don't know. What can I say? Your, your fight and flight is backwards. And you're like, oh, man, this is a scary beer. I'm going to fight it. And it's like, oh, I look at there's a train coming towards me. I'm going to fight it. And you're like, yeah, maybe you need to like inverse your thinking or something like that. And, and hopefully, hopefully we can stop buying shitty games that you recommend. Who, who knows? I, I will go off on like personal project failures, but there's probably been too many and too many forgotten. There was this one time, right? I tried to be a sales guy. It did not go well. If anyone remembers, you know, back back in the day, you know, door-to-door -door salespeople used to be a thing. I was kind of just finishing up college and I was like, right, I need to do something to make a bit of money. And this crowd were like, come work for us, you know, do a quick interview, get, do a day's training and then earn loads of money and all that anyway. So I went, you know, did the training. My my first warning shot should have been, you know, on day one, it was like, right, everyone huddle into a circle. We're going to throw the rugby ball of hype or whatever the fuck it was <laughs> go back to the video games again yeah go on cut it yeah so it was like trying rugby ball around it was like yeah we're gonna get hype what we're we gonna do we're gonna go out and sell stuff yeah 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 and it was like okay what's your first assignment it was like 
you had to pay all your own expenses, by the way. So you didn't make any money until after you'd sold something and gotten a commission. So transport. And anyway, first assignment, they're like, okay, great. Where are we going to sell this security product, you know, for home security? They're like, you're going to Port Leash. And you're like, oh, okay, that's a while. You're going to the roughest estate in Port Leash. And you're like, oh, okay. And yeah, you know. So I remember walking around this estate, you know, and every door you open, they're like, you know, one of them was, you know, oh, sure, we, we, we don't need a security system. Sure, our lads around here are the ones robbing all the houses. And yeah, that was one of the doors I got met with. <laughs> Uh, another fella you know he, he was kind of nice but he was like sure what would i need sure i've got this here and he kind of opens his door and he shows me a saw and shotgun there it's like jesus christ like <laughs> <laughs> so, so after a few of those you, know, you start get a bit demotivated you know and then nearly two weeks in and then you know and nearly made my first sale and you know just as i was about to to sign dotted line then and the senior guy kind of swooped in and went oh yeah i'll just do that and sign the paper and then it was his commission i was like Oh. Anyway, needless to say, you know, the next day, you know, I got a phone call saying, oh, yeah, we've got a job if you want to try out for, you know, an IT repair job or something. I went, great, yeah. I just never turned up at that sales place again. My, that was my career in sales, guys. I, I failed miserably. Wow. That's, uh, I, I can imagine it. We're just not say We're not. We're not people, people. We're not uh, people. We're not people. <laughs> I don't. How do you say we're not people, people? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's it. We're not people, people. <laughs> I think Dale just let it out of the bag. He's actually a chat GPT-3 bot. Um, he's not real. He can't use proper languages. If you feed him any information that's non-standard, he'll just he say he's a people, people thing. <laughs> I always say this to people. Is I like, I like, I I only speak one language, English, and I always say to people, I, I you know, it's not my first language. <laughs> are you like what language is are you fluent in? No, what, you have to be fluent in your own language. No, fuck that. I'm not fluent in English. Oh, oh man. But yeah. you know, at least at least it's 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 uh, it, that's a that's a good story. Yeah, I mean, you, what you should have did when you were throwing them on the ball is hyped the type the company you were in and it would have gone bankrupt the next day. That probably would have been a quicker, <laughs> a quicker, a quicker solution, Connor. So, you mean, so we should have gone back and like hyped it up to get revenge is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty Cause, much. Cause, it, Cause you would have said to us, buy, to buy their stock. We would have bought their stock and it would have gone under the next day. <laughs> Guys, this company is a surefire investment. Awesome. <laughs> Fucking bankrupt the next day. So considering we don't have any listeners yet for our question segment, what we will do is um, I actually have some, I want to ask you too about something that's actually been bugging me. Now it's been bugging me for a while. I want to mention this, Darren probably would say for God's sake, but do you remember the busted song Year 3000? Fuck you. Oh God, why, why? why? I know what he's going to talk about. Just fucking go for it. We have not had this talk before. And it's just something I want to bring up again so our public listeners are all however many listeners we may have. In the song, some, there's, a, there's a phrase used that's actually bothering me. So it, do you know the song, Connor? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> so in it, he said, um, the alien or the person from the future apparently said, I've been to the years to 3000, right? Are you happy so far? Yeah, I, I, I know where this goes and what the implication of the song is when you actually <laughs> think about the lyrics properly. Yeah, so the next part is what bothers me, right? This is, there's three things that bothers me in the song, and this is the first part, right? So it says, I've been to the year 3000, not much has changed, but they live underwater. Now, I, I'm sorry, but that sounds like a big change. I, I, I don't get it. it, it you know, it, it, that's a big change. And I think Darren had a different comment about this. He's like, oh, no, you mean society hasn't changed, you know, and because we talked about this many years ago, and I still remember this conversation. Maybe he just watched Waterworld and there's like not much has changed. Like, cause <laughs> he was just watching Waterworld. Potentially, I, I, there's nothing to indicate that. But yeah, it could have been that you were watching the commercial <laughs> failure flop of Waterworld made in 1990. So, but yeah, like, I, it, it just it bothers me so much. It's like, it, 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 you can't just pass that by. If, I, if someone came from the year 2000 and said, not much has changed, but they live underwater, it's like, hold on a second now here. Like, we have, if you. <laughs> You have these juicers that change, you know, kind of shit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like and that that changes the landscape because people will forever remember the stupid kicks that are failures and saw this commercial favorite from Silicon Valley. So, if people are living in the water, surely things have changed. Surely, society, you know, like how like, well, well, what's going on? Well, I think people are still making crappy juicers that don't fucking work. So I'm assuming <laughs> not much has changed. 
Well, no, yeah, I, I guess you're going to go on to the next part of the song, which is the great great granddaughter bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, so this, this is actually a two part or part, okay? So the two part. <laughs> so, oh, so the next two, the next two is like, so uh, first of all, the alien says, and my, and your great great, gra- your great 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 granddaughter is pretty fine. Now, this again bothers me greatly for two reasons, right? The first reason is, why, why are you telling me this? <laughs> like, if, if like, like, okay, that's fantastic that she's hot or whatever. <laughs> why are you telling me this? This balls on this, like, was an alien or a time traveler or whatever, right? Bends the space time continuum, right? Literally, wove, like, alters the fabric of the time travels to go to your, like, that's like, like, imagine I went to, to, to my wife's father and be like, your daughter's pretty fine. You'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about, right? <laughs> to, to literally alter the space time continuum to go to your great great grandfather to say you're, she's pretty, the balls on that person. Yeah, it seems like a waste of technology to me, to be honest. Like, <laughs> Maybe it's the same. It's the time time machines are like the juicers. They're fucking useless machines in the future. Just to clarify, it's um, it's his neighbor Peter, and he has a flux capacitor. Uh, so it's not an alien. Yeah. It's not from the future. So his, his neighbor goes into the future, comes back in time, and tells his neighbor, "You know your great great granddaughter. She's fucking hot." Like, <laughs> what, what's, what's wrong with you? What is wrong no. with you? What about oh and everyone? Like if, if, my, if my neighbor did that, I I beat the shit. Like if, I, if you if my neighbor did that, came back in time and goes, "Oh yeah, not much is saying. Ah, they all live in the war. I'd say okay, but and then he goes, "Oh, but your great granddaughter's really hot." I'm like, I am going to slap you unless you give me some con- <laughs> like some a valid information. I, well, you, you're maybe you're kind of assuming. I don't know. In this case, that the fella has some intelligence. Maybe he doesn't. You know, maybe it was a free flux capacitor with every box of cocoa pops or something. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're diving in too deep and we're assuming too much intelligence or intent here from the person. You know, I don't know. Let me just let me actually let me just uh, go back and see how he how he got it. Uh, it doesn't tell you how he got it. He says um, also like that. He's like, oh, yeah, and there's boy bands and boy bands and another one. There's, there's, there's plenty of boy bands or something along those lines, I think the lyrics are. It, it's a, it's it, a pandemic, yeah. A pandemic, a pandemic of, of boy, boy bands, bands. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a fucking dystopian. Not like, I played Bioshock, and I think that's a more pleasant fucking place. Like, that Rapture is, like, what all these people trying to kill you is a lot better place than having, like, boy bands, like, trying to get into your homes and sing songs and stuff like that. So not, not much has changed except we live underwater. Fucking mention the boy band first. Not much has changed, but fucking there's a boy band epidemic. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was kind of a few years ago with, uh, you know, X-Factor and all that shit coming out. There's too many of them, you know. But, okay, so, okay, so that's the second problem, right? We, we have a lot of problems there. The third problem is, now he mentions that he's been to the year 2000 and he's mentioned that your great, 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 so three great granddaughters is really fine. Now, if if you based on where you were from now, right, and you said you lived two hundred years and then you had a daughter, and she lived two hundred, she had a daughter. So worst case scenario, you say your daughter from four hundred years time is now six hundred years old, and she's pretty fucking hot, you know. So like, where 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 does this come from? Where where do we start living forever? Is it because she lived like? It's good genes, I'm assuming. Some very good genes. <laughs> I, so so I. It just it because the reason why it annoys me is because I forgot about this and I, I I was able to live my life you know I was able to go on <laughs> each day happy and then I heard it on the radio and I went no it's it's all coming back to me now this this infuriates me greatly to no bounds so if you if you were from the band busted and you would like to clarify this song please contact us officially we don't at gmail dot com. So on the same note, I I agree with you. I've spent too much time listening to songs, right? And does anyone remember that Be Which song Say La Vie? Yes. Uh, why, why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> so, in the song Say La Vie, they're basically like, oh, hey, boy, sitting in the tree, you know, and it, and it, and it says, like, like come down, I've got four walls, like, if you show me mine, I'll show you. That's a really creepy song. So, there's, like, what, a 25-year-old girl, right, talking to this boy, in, like, like, a boy in his treehouse, basically, and she's like, like, come down, and then she's like, if you don't come, I'll huff, I'll puff, I'll huff and puff and blow you away. It's like, like that's a predator, right? That's that's just a kid trying to predator. <laughs> trying to get a boy out of a tree and say, "Come to my house." I'll, if you show me your house, I'll show you my house. It's like, okay, don't follow this lady back to her house. Stay in the tree house. Call nine nine nine. Get the guardy out. Take 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 the bewitched band away so they could maybe perform somewhere else. Oh. <laughs> I think they're still on tour in the UK. <laughs> Well, if you're the, if you're the, from the bad which please email us if you're not in the Gmail account. No, but seriously, I just listen. It's just like the lyrics just creep me out. Every time I listen to any lyrics now, they just they just creep me out to no end. 
What's the classic one? Isn't it the the police song? Uh, you know, every breath you take. You know, if you listen to those lyrics, those are very <laughs> so. So there's so many songs out there where maybe maybe the lesson here is don't actually try and listen too deeply to the meaning of the song. But it depends. Wait, is that police song against crim? Like, is is that more like a policeman watch uh, against criminals? Like, I'll be watching every breath you take, like, because you could throw you. So the lyrics, you know, every breath you take, you know, it's from the perspective of a stalker. If you break it oh, down. Oh right, okay, yes. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. against it, like, a, yeah, okay, so, yeah, that's that's just fucking creepy. Like, do you remember the S Club song "Bring It All Back to You"? Right. That's a really that's like a narcissist <laughs> selfish person. It's like, no, it's not. Never give up. Bring it all back to you. It's like, no, don't always bring it back to you. If someone's giving you problems, don't be like, oh no, I'm gonna bring it all back to me. It's like, no, fuck you. There's a time and place for you. Shut the fuck up. Me. What about me? What about me? What about my problem? Bring it all back to you. Bring it all back now. It's like, no, don't bring it all back to you. Don't. There's a time and place for bringing it all back to you. It ends not now. It's like the other stuff as well. It's like, should I stay or should I go? If I stay, there will be trouble. But if I go, there will be double. Well, don't go then. If it's double trouble, then don't go. It's, it's easy. Bosh. Mm, do it. Don't. Bosh. Stay. Fucking sorry. Yeah. Should I stay? Yeah. Go on. Good. We're going good. Song over. Go on. Don't need to release it now. <laughs> <laughs> Problem song. I think we're reading way too much into these songs, but it does annoy me, man. Yeah. And it's, it's, that, that song, what was it? It was that Busted or McFly, like the air hostess song as well. It's like, you, you creepy <laughs> lyric motherfucker. Just ignore Like, let them do their job. <laughs> like, 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 don't don't be a leery motherfucker. Just eat your peanuts. Watch the ink. Watch Batman nipples on your fucking in flight movie and just get <laughs> shut the fuck off. Do I should have what they released the airplane song? Was it what? Like, you, you know, know you know, know, air air hostess. I like the way you dress. You know, it's. It, Oh yeah, now now it's uh, uh, I think I blo- I think I blocked that. Out, I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I oh, my brain intentionally did that. Didn't they release another one about question weddings? Yeah, yeah, like like you rude bastard. I mean, <laughs> she, I, she, I guess I guess she does end up with the person because he's like, I'm glad I crashed the wedding. But I mean, dude, you like, you're always going to be known as the fucking guy who crashed the wedding. Like you, you're a bit of a prick. You time traveling, get a wedding crush, yeah. <laughs> hostess harassing bastards. Stop doing shit like this, please. I think that we're probably talking about two different bands as well. I don't think they're like, <laughs> Someone's going to email us and be like, this one was from Boston and this one's from McFly. And I'm just like, I, I don't care. I really don't care. They merged, didn't they? They made um, McBusted or something. Or Bufly. <laughs> that sounds like a McDonald's meal, but yeah. I think it was McBusted. I think they did do McBusted. And I think at one point there was a rumour that I think Westlife and Boyzone and it was going to be called Boys Life or something like that. I think they were going to be a, an MCU of boy bands. <laughs> I prefer West Boys, but yeah. <laughs> go, go away, people are celebrating. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Connor? What's, what, what lyrics are, well, what do you believe, what do you think about all this? Are we, are we looking too deep into this? Are we overanalyzing these songs? I think sometimes, yeah, you can overanalyze a song. Sometimes you just have to block out the meaning. Does anyone remember a song? And it's about Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want that to be our intro. Like, seriously, that, if, we, if we could get Rebecca Black to agree to let us use that as our intro outro, that's going to become our intro outro. And we can release on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for like Friday, Friday, you gotta get down on Friday, and then she goes through like the weeks and the days of the week. And well, that's very educational for people who don't know the days of the week, you know. Yeah, but the serious question is, which seat do you take? I actually can't remember the lyrics, so I'm sure that's a reference for sitting in the back seat or the front seat. <laughs> it is, yeah, it, it fucking is. <laughs> well, you say it was educational, but you know, if you remember the music video, you know, they had no seatbelts on, they were all sitting standing on the back of the car, very dangerous, you know, promoting dangerous <laughs> youth driving without driving licenses and stuff. So, yeah. Wait, hold on a second. How do you know do you want your driving license? Because you went to a 14, were you? <laughs> yeah, they're a little bit too young. Does anyone like like sorry to to, to hound on about this, but like when I, when I'm singing to my daughter and you know that song Five Little Ducks, <laughs> you know yeah. you know the song Five Little Ducks, right? That's a story about parental neglect because like this it's like five little ducks went out one day and then only four came back and then the, then it's like four ducks went out one day. It's a different day, and then so basically after five days, all like when our favorite son is gone, the last duck, then she only goes out looking for the ducks. That just sounds like a horrible, horrible parent duck. She didn't learn a fucking lesson. What? 
she didn't learn her lesson after the first day. Like, you know, she didn't call the cops. She didn't. She didn't learn oh, the she, she, she didn't learn a lesson. It's like <laughs> as if like the, someone was like ducking the fucking ducks or something, and she was still making a mistake. But yeah, but, I get but, what you. Well, mean. Well, as you're listening to the song, you don't know if. Uh, if if, if if someone's abducted him, he went away, you know, he didn't come back, you know, you don't know that when you're listening to the song. That's true. Uh, aren't all the kids' songs a bit dark in some way, if you actually listen to them? <laughs> aren't, they're all a bit like, wait, 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 why, why am I playing this to a child? This makes no sense. <laughs> uh, pocket Full of Posies one, and... Uh, oh, yeah, Ashes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like ashes, that, yeah. Ashes, yeah. The Wheels and the Bus has probably got some connotation in it as well. <laughs> They don't always go round and round, Connor. They don't always go round and round. Well, no, it's because Dublin bus don't fucking come along, and when they do, there's like four of them. <laughs> it's, it's essentially the soundtrack to Speed. You know, they're all trapped in the bus. They can't get off because the wheels <laughs> not go round and round. <laughs> I'd, I'd listen. I can, you know, Reeves is on that bus on that <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Who else was in that movie? Oh, Sandra Bullock, wasn't it? Which one? Speed. The, the, the first one, the first one, not the second the one. The bus one, not, not the boat. Not, the boats don't have the wheels going round and round. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the first one, yeah, Speed had Sandy Bullock's in. Two Free, second, uh, I just got to restart Daniel Jat, Chat GPT3 <laughs> software because he, he's, he's just getting things wrong all day. The, 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 yeah, yeah, do you remember that other movie, Sandra Bullock and um, Karen Reeves was in? It was called uh, The le- Letter to Nobody. The Lake House. It wasn't, the Lake House, the that's house. the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lake House, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is any good? I've never seen it. It was all right, yeah. I actually kind of enjoyed it. What's so good about this house as in the lake? Time travel. Year 3000. Ah, oh, fucking busted again, man. It's just fucking <laughs> keep going. No, but it is it's basically time travel. Basically a time traveling letterbox. Oh, right. That's, oh, that's the one where they're like two years apart and then the, the letters go in and you go yeah. in two years later or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. Is it like just that, letters? Yeah. Can you put in anything you want? Like, what if you just like, where well, does it... Well, you stick in your dick or something and does it come out in your head? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For Keanu Reeves, I'm sure he can get it through all the way, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just wondering what the what the, I mean, if I had something like that, like I'd I'd see what what the boundaries are, you know, the QA test that shit. <laughs> and then we know where all those pictures of that server came from, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what my penis two years from now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been to the year 2025. There's just penises everywhere. <laughs> Not much has changed, but there's just pictures of penises everywhere. <laughs> Covers the land. Every bit of floor and every bit of ground is just covered in it. No, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen that. I may add it to my, my, my to watch list. I hope they do another one together. And maybe, maybe it's this MCU type thing, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Bullock, Carol Reeve type movie. The lake house, the bow house, the fucking the inn. Yeah, they're going to make a cinematic house universe. <laughs> Yeah, so, so so wait, so what happened? To, uh, just uh, I suppose we could do a spoiler alert just for anyone who hasn't watched the Lake House since 2006. Darren's going to spoil the ending for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone everyone is listening to this podcast just intently go, What happened to the lake? I, 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 I can't wait that even to understand I, just what happened in the movie. No, you fucking watch the movie, don't be a lazy asshole. Just I'm not, I'm not spoiling it for no one, okay? I'll I just want to well, watch the movie. Is it good? Yeah, yeah, it it, 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 it's a nice romantic movie. Watch it with your wife. Don't 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 think about sticking your penis into the letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, I'm gonna leave that all in. You... Warning: This podcast may contain some mature content. <laughs> well, they, all of them do. <laughs> yeah, but we do our warning at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so. What did we talk about here today? We talked about commercial and per- personal project failures. We talked about penises. Penises <laughs> and more penises. We talked about busted going to the year 2000 and not telling us fuck all information about what happened there other than everyone living underwater and hot, hot, hot descendants. And Keanu Reeves shoving his penis in a letterbox. It's been a very informative podcast. Any plans for the week, guys? Reevaluate my life choices. I think I'll watch more Korean people wrestling and chasing each other around dog parks <laughs> oh yes yeah, sorry i forgot that connor and we learned about connor and his muslim muslim men many many muslim men and a dog apparently too so thank you everyone for listening and we'll tune in next week when connor will be our host again thank you very much say thanks guys you're just not going to say thanks to everyone fine thanks bye <sighs>